What's going on guys? Thanks for tuning in again. Before I start this video, I just want to say, please know that the fairy tale depicted in the movie that I'm about to review is just that, a fairy tale. If you find yourself in a situation or relationship similar to the one depicted in this movie, know that that is not love. Please get away. What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to be giving you my, so I guess Netflix making softcore porn now. Review of 365 days starting right. What's going on YouTube? This is Mustafa Love with Hearthstone Media. Thanks for tuning in again. But if this is your first time checking out the channel, please think about hitting the like or subscribe button to be notified the next time we make a video like this. I promise you that your shipment of cocaine will not be hijacked by a rival cartel gang and then you would have to rage war on them. If you hit the like or subscribe button, or maybe it will if you don't, it's your call. But without further ado, let's get to the video. So 365 Days, now streaming on Netflix, is a story about a Sicilian drug lord who, wait, you know what? Since we're talking about Sicilian drug lords, maybe I should dress the part. So 365, now streaming on Netflix. Uh, I'm not gonna get too much into the plot of the movie. I want you to go in as fresh as I did. So, Mild, mild spoilers for the movie. I didn't watch the trailer. I didn't know anything about the movie going into me actually watching the movie. I thought it was uh, interesting what made me want to watch it was the fact that it was streaming, that it was number one ranking on Netflix. So the fact that the movie is actually ranking number one on Netflix, it tells me maybe like two things. For one, a lot of you out there are dealing with a lot of repressed sexual desires that you probably should um, probably should delve into. Or go see somebody about one or the other. Two, it tells me that a lot of you guys out there are horny, like really horny, because this was some parts of this movie was softcore porn at its best. Like to, to put it in the context, this movie, if Fifty Shades of Grey was a good movie and had real realistic sex scenes with Spanish subtext, it would probably be this movie. So, if you like Fifty Shades of Grey, you really, really love this movie because it was way better than Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, I get the, the the fantasy and the, you know, the fairy tale nature of, you know, books and novels similar to this. And I see the, the luster in it and why people enjoy them, especially women. Um, if you're a guy, is this movie going to do anything for you? Maybe in some parts. Um, the movie was, was was very entertaining. It was pretty easy to follow, even with some of the uh, subtitles. The movie wasn't completely in a foreign language. It was, um, you know, a couple of characters spoke. Uh, they were Polish, so I don't know exactly what language they were speaking. So when they were speaking, they were speaking with subtitles. And uh, they were speaking in, in a different language. I think uh, they were Sicilian. So they were speaking in a different language early on in the movie. So it was a couple of bits and pieces in there. So if you were trying to watch this movie in the background, you would you would lose some spots of it because it would it would switch at some points to uh, subtitles. But um, you know the the plot point of the movie, I, I really don't want to get into, but it's, it's very simplistic. But the movie itself wasn't simplistic. The movie didn't have a lot of cliche tropes. The movie took chances. Um, the characters were memorable. I, if you watch any of my other reviews, you know I'll walk out of a movie or get off my couch out of a movie not remembering anybody, somebody. By I Guy remember Pierce, all the characters' character names in this movie, even some of the remember. smaller players. So the movie did a good job without hammering, hammering it home. It wasn't like every time they mentioned a person's name or somebody referred to somebody, they called them by name. But the main character's name was Maximo. I know that. The main uh, um, femme fatale in the movie, her name was Lauren. Uh, her, her rival, so to speak, uh, was, uh, was Anna. You know, her ex was Martin. I remember these names because they made them memorable. Um, the acting was actually solid and on point. Which was surprising because I didn't know any of these actors and I don't think any of you will either. Some of them have very minimal acting credits and then their acting credits, they've been in very small roles or in maybe foreign language type films or TV spots or something like that. So you won't recognize any of these people. Now, part of my problem with the movie was, especially early on in the movie, because I didn't know any of the characters, because I couldn't recognize them. It was one thing that was done in the movie that I, I don't know why it was a casting choice, whatever the case may be. All of the female actors looked alike. Every single woman that was depicted in the first 
half of the movie, they all looked exactly alike. It was very confusing. And I had to rewind back a couple of times because I was like, wait a minute, is, is who is that happening to? They all look alike. Now, partly they were trying to, you know, show that the guy Maximo has a type. But even like the girl's best friend looked exactly like her. Now I know a birds of a feather flock together type thing. I see women all the time that it's like, yeah, she looks just like, you know, you see two best friends and you think they're sisters, but they just two women that look alike that end up start hanging out together. It happens. But it was very confusing for the movie. Um, only was it a, a, a change in, in the visual of one of the characters very later on in the movie. It would have been great if that would have happened early on. It would have made the movie a little bit more easier for me to follow. So again, all of the acting was on point. The characters seemed really um, believable. Um, it didn't seem cheesy. The the studio, I guess I'll, I'll put the name of the studio up here. I can't remember the studio that, that produced this. Um, it was very very unknown studio, but they actually did a really good job. The I don't know what the budget for the film is. I'll probably take a moment to look that up. The film didn't seem cheap. It didn't look like a TV drama. It didn't look like a daytime soap. It looked like a real movie. Again, I would put this movie on the same quality level as Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, the locales were beautiful. They were on location for all of those shots. I don't know if they actually went to different parts of the world to film this movie, but if they didn't, they made you believe it. It looked like they went to different parts of the world to film this movie. And that helped you you get like caught up or, or, or sucked in to the fantasy aspect of the movie. Now, with some of my problems with the movie was this. For one, I think this movie set back the women's movement years. Uh, it was hard to watch, even for me being a man, it was hard to watch some of the scenes and some of the sequences and some of the situations that women were put in in this movie. Um, and, and, and the fact that the narrative was that women should be okay with being put in these situations because some of the women were okay with it. Now, again, that lends to the fantasy aspect of the movie in which I said in my opening, know how to, how to separate real from fake, know how to separate fact from fiction and fantasy from reality. Um, you know, women and, and for men too, just because you might be handsome, just because you might be, you know, attractive or in good shape, that doesn't necessarily mean that a woman wants you pressing up against her or grabbing her or forcibly, you know, forcing her to do something because you're hot. And, and I hope that, you know, I, that women don't take that from this movie that guys think that way. I hope that guys don't take it that that's okay behavior. And I hope that women don't take it like they should be okay with that behavior, depending on who it's coming from. Now, we all know what it's like to have advances from somebody you're attracted to versus advances from somebody you're not. But this movie has a very jaded way of depicting the, the, those scenarios. So some of the imagery was a, a little uncomfortable for me to watch, but I but I did realize, look, this is a movie, this is part of the fantasy of this movie, and it was part of the actual character building. So I got I got it for that point. Um, it didn't necessarily make the main character and some of the things he did unlikable, um, but you weren't, you definitely weren't feeling this guy. Um, so it, it, like, again, don't want to give up anything, any spoilers for the movie. Or what the true plot point was, but you know you kind of you kind of get both characters. You see where the movie is going, but again, the movie doesn't just you know go down a cookie cutter path. It doesn't just like go down and check off boxes. It takes some chances. It does some things that you wouldn't really just expect. Some things that you didn't really know was going to happen or see coming. Uh, the only thing you did see the movie um, really is based off the Beauty and the Beast concept. You know, what I mean, it, it, you know, the Stockholm syndrome syndrome uh, concept. So uh, it, that's the only spoiler I can give uh, about the movie. The movie is basically, you know, a Latin version of Beauty and the Beast with Fifty Shades of Grey. You know what? It's a meme for that. I'm going to find it. I'm going to post it right there. This is the last thing I do. So um, what else can I say about this movie? The movie will definitely make some take a look at their sex life or, you know, lack, lack thereof or, you know, the non-existence of it uh, with some of the scenes. Again, it, it, this is it. Some of the scenes are, are very, very, very soft core pointers. This this movie could have easily been rated NC-17 had it had a couple more things. Actually, I need to check the rating. It might actually be rated NC-17, but it could have easily been rated NC-17. Um, you know, the, the, the sex scenes were very graphic. And again, 
this, this movie showed some of the things that people I, I know who watched Fifty Shades of Grey after reading the books were, were hoping were going to be in that movie. This movie actually gave it to you. They had they had no holes barred. Um, the controlling nature of the relationship that was depicted that, again, like I said, my opening came across from this place of love. It could have easily been like if you've seen The Invisible Man, this movie could have easily been the backstory or the prelude to The Invisible Man. Where one person might look at it like, oh my God, that's that's a dream, that's a fantasy, to another person that's their nightmare. And some people are living in nightmares similar to the one depicted early on in this movie. Um, so that is probably like my negative in the movie. Overall, I enjoyed the movie. It surprised me that I enjoyed it. When I first started watching it, it was kind of like, hmm, where are we going here? Wasn't really feeling it all together but it kept me engaged and then as the movie went on and some of the chances that they took uh you know the dialogue was was pretty good the scenes where uh the main character lauren was was interacting with her best friend were very real i know women would really identify with those scenes because it really seemed like real conversation that two women would be having during good times fun times and in crisis and you've seen these women interact in all of those times i really believe that um, the emotion that was shown by the main character, Maximo, who I'll find his name and I'll put it up here, seemed real. It seemed believable, the things that he was going through. Now, was he a little on edge all the time? Was it somewhat unrealistic? Yes, but guys like him do exist. Um, and I can see guys like him acting the way he acted in a lot of multiple situations and scenarios that he was putting in this movie. Another thing about the movie that 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 was that was made... Um, very subtly obvious was good sex. Well, let me say like great sex can be a veil or blindfold over toxicity. Like seriously, and maybe that should be our word of the day. Toxicity. And um, it, it was like, and I know a lot of people have found themselves in situations and relationships like that where you just can't get away from that toxic person or that toxic relationship or that toxic situation because sex is just mind-blowingly amazing. I, I won't. So I, I truly, truly, truly understood that part of the movie. It was depicted really well. Um, so in a nutshell, guys, what are we rating 365 on Netflix? Be right back. So 365, now ranking number one on Netflix, because of all you perverts out there, was bold, sexy, and took a lot of chances. And for that, 365 on Netflix gets a bottle of Louis Martini Cabernet Sauvignon. I think that's the best rating I've given out so far on this channel. And yeah, that about right. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like these videos, you can click my face here to subscribe, here to watch more videos.